let the heavens be open over our lives. Amen. And let there be the flow of your power Amen. from the throne of mercy. Amen. And in this hour, speak to us. God, open our ears that we may hear you. Amen. Our hearts that we may understand and receive. And above all, give us the willingness to obey you that it may be well with us. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We give thanks and praise to the Almighty, awesome, and faithful God, who has been with us through the past year, 2022, with all its challenges, its ups and downs, for some of us, 2022 will ever be remembered because of some remarkable things that the Lord did in our lives. Some are wonderful, but for some, there may be some bitter experiences and challenges. One thing is that when God created the heavens and the earth, the first thing he created is time and season. For when he said, let there be light, and there was light, there was separation between light and darkness, and that began the first day. And so, I believe that 2023 is another season, another beginning, a fresh new page given to us by the one who has made times and seasons that him alone shall be glorified in them all. And we believe that this is the season of God's help. 2022 is over. And as we normally pray in our liturgy for compliance, what is done is done and what is not done is not done. And so let it be. It is over. But today, the first day of the month of January, in the year of our Lord, 2023, God is opening a fresh page to you and me. Amen. And as we walk into this freshness of God, may He go ahead of us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Incidentally, January 1 is not the first day of the year or in the Christian calendar. But according to the Roman calendar, this is the, this is the beginning of the year. But today is significant in the calendar of the church. It is the circumcision and the naming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, as we enter into the new year, the Lord is beginning with us at the point of Gilgal, the place where Israel entered before they occupied the promised land. And Gilgal was the place of circumcision, of renewal of covenant with God, and of receiving direction as to what they need to do in order to conquer the land. And today, I welcome you to Gilda. That as we look up unto the Lord and step into the year 2023, that God will circumcise our hearts. That God will give us what it will take for us to walk with Him in holiness, in righteousness, and serve Him without fear all the days of our lives and we shall possess our possessions. Amen. Brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers in the Lord, the message for this year 2023 is titled The Year of Divine Exaltation. The Year of Divine Exaltation. 2023 shall be unto us the year of 
God's own exaltation. Come with me to Proverbs 14 verse 34. Proverbs 14 verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Again, come with me to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. From verse 8 and 9. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A center of righteousness is the center of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, you are God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Amen. Amen. The year of divine exaltation. This message is coming within a context. The context of our nation, Nigeria. For the past few years, this nation has almost come to the brink of breakup, of destruction. Many have lost their jobs, hope, and in fact, not only their livelihood, but even their own very lives. As I'm talking to you now, there are still people held in captivity. Slavery is still real in our midst. Brothers and sisters, is it because that we do not have leadership or princes in the land that can challenge this status quo? and bring a change. In most cases, it is because we, the leadership have lacked the political will. And in many situations, they have gone for what they will get rather than what they will give. But we have seen that leadership is meant to give direction, make provision, and defend the rights and security and the well-being of the citizens. But in our case, recent years have shown that it has not worked for us. Brothers and sisters, our freedom has been mortgaged. Our resources have been looted. Nigeria is a wonderful place. We are a huge volume of oil, which is the mainstay of our of our economy, is being siphoned, stolen, and there is no trace. It will take channel television and other media houses to 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 begin to expose them for government. Does it mean that they didn't know? At a point when other nations are declaring billions of dollars of Income because of the war in Ukraine from oil and our own NMPC is not even bringing any returns anymore. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this year it will be another inaugural year of a turnaround if there will be commitment and sincerity in the political leadership there shall be a peaceful trans transition of power many are saying it will not happen there was no Nigeria will survive we will overcome this nation belongs to us we have waited upon the Lord and he has never disappointed us. We shall have peaceful transition. The Lord shall reign in our situation. 
The present political and social and economic challenges will not immediately disappear. In fact, I pity the next government because the first four years will be full of battles. Look at the ministries from defense to police to uh, ports authority to, to education, to agriculture, to uh, uh, ICT and uh, and digital economy. Look, it is the same people. As of now, there is nothing like federal character. That law has been killed. But the same people that killed it will be the same people that will agitate for its implementation when they are no longer in power. Are you hearing me? I pity the next government, no matter who it may be. The military is infiltrated, the police is infiltrated, and if your if your security is already infiltrated by your enemy, you are gone. A nation can fall either by frontal attack or by internal invasion. But unfortunately, even in the place, in the offices that hold the key elements of this, the life of this nation, are already compromised. So where will you start to flush out? And who will you send away? You send him away and his people will keep quiet? Try it. We have enjoyed supply of fuel. But let me tell you, from June, be ready to go without fuel. Because by the budget, by May, June, fuel subsidy will cease. So it will be left to the new government after a month to decide what to do to remove it or to continue. Brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. If anybody is telling you a prophecy of this and that, watch and pray. It will take the working together of both the citizens and leadership for us to arrive at a sustainable, I mean sustainable solution. But in their desperation, there will be some Political horse trading by politicians and political parties. And in fact, whether you like it or not, 2023 will see a very greater move of the trade unions and their issues. And that will help in shaping the life of this nation, economically and socially. And in such a situation as this, what is the word of God to us for this year? It will be the year of divine exaltation. Proverbs 14, verse 34. And as Moses said to Israel, so do I put before you. This day, the Lord is putting before us life and death. If we will obey God and follow Him and uphold His standards, brethren, there is no mention of words. Let no man deceive you. God's standards have never changed. The wages of sin is still death. The result of sin is reproach. We have lived in reproach. A whole nation like this Nigeria even World Cup, we don't need. World Cup. God have mercy. Brethren, this will not continue. This year, the Lord will be exalted. And when He is lifted above every situation and circumstance, Situation
situations and circumstances will bow before him. He will touch the hearts of sons and daughters of the living God and they will take definite stand. We have a stake in this nation and that must not be compromised. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, In the world there will be many tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Be not afraid, brothers and sisters. Stand strong for God. God shall be exalted, and Nigeria shall be delivered. And there shall be a turnaround for good for us and our children and our children's children. Help shall come from Zion, from the God who rules in, in Zion, the God of grace. Amen. Amen. But as we enter into this new year, 2023, the year of divine exaltation, brothers and sisters, Joshua in Joshua chapter 3, from verse 3 to 5, when God brought Israel out of of the land of bondage and brought them to the verge of entering into the promised land. The only thing that was awaiting them was the river Jordan. But God commanded that Joshua and the leaders, the priests, the religious and the political leaders should move ahead. Because his presence will go before them. Because the priest would be at the ark of the covenant of God. And the ark of the covenant of God represented for Israel the very presence of God. And this was the instruction. When you see the ark of the Lord, you are God. The God of all the earth. And the priest bearing it, you shall follow the ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth. Brothers and sisters, what we see and who we follow and what we have made up our mind to follow this year will determine where we are going and what we will achieve. Believers have a great part to play in the events that will shape the national life in this year. Know that the assurance of God's presence is with us. They that know their God shall stand and they shall do great exploits. We shall not be exploited. But rather, God has fashioned you and I for exploits. Again, looking at the situation, Psalm 46, verses 4 and 5, brings clearly the rule that faith and the faithful will play. For it says, though there may be troubles and upheavals here and there, it says, there is a, new, a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of time. God shall help my children at the break of dawn. God will help my family. God will help your family. God will help my life. God will help your life. And he will not be late. This is the year of his exaltation. And we surrender all to him. And no man has any, any right to have dominion over us. Except by the permission of the Lord. Therefore, brothers and sisters, hear the word of God and obey his instructions. Let us rise up and follow him because he knows the way, he knows the way, and he will lead us through the way into the land of promise of 2023. What fullness and wholesome obedience is required in following the Lord? God is demanding of us you that believe in this awesome God, the God who has dominion over the affairs of men, God is depending, God is saying, look, arise. I want to partner with you. I'm looking for a man. The eyes of the Lord is going through and through the whole time, looking for a man, a woman, whose heart 
is set upon the Lord. And what does the scripture say? When God finds such a person, he shows himself mighty. God is about to exalt his holy name. He's about to do a thing that will marvel our time and generation. But he is looking for a man. He's looking for a woman. He's looking for a family. He's looking for a people. Will he find one in you and I? God shall be exalted. Amen. And in him, we shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Refuse anyone exploiting you. Refuse anyone casting down your spirit. Refuse anyone wanting to subdue you in order to have his will. No. We are the step. And when we talk of exaltation, to exalt means to honor, to hold in high esteem, to raise, to promote in rank, in status, or be elevated. Exaltation is the act of raising high the state of being elevated. In fact, it is the refinement of a body or increasing of, a, of its virtue or principal property. Exhortation has to do with promotion, being magnified, being honored, and experiencing prosperity continually. In our natural mentality, we think we will always think of economic advantages that will come to us. Or surprising breakthroughs, miraculous things happening around us just for us. The exaltation that comes from God is a wholesome spiritual, physical, and social package, all in one. Divine exaltation is attached to God Himself, His nature, His character, and His word. God does not bless sin. He does not bless corruption or wickedness. It is indeed a reproach to any people. While righteousness brings exhortation, corruption, wickedness, and sin in the lives of people and in the lives of families and nations bring reproach. And we have suffered that so much. And so, as we come into this election year, and as we look forward to a transition that will be peaceful, that will bring a new leadership and direction to this nation, God is saying the exaltation he is talking about has about three characters. Number one, this exaltation is due to God and God. His glory he will share with nobody. His, his honor he will not give to any man or to any idol. For indeed, honor, glory, excellence belongs to him alone. And he is the one that honors David. In First Chronicles 29, he says, Glory, honor, dominion come from you. Wealth and power flow from you. But we have seen that when this God, who alone is exalted, whenever he intervenes in any human situation, he changes our narratives. He brings deliverance. He gives us reason to rejoice in victory. Given our situation in Nigeria, 2023 shall be to us the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. A year of jubilee. A year of unique divine intervention that will bring a turnaround in the lives of the people of this nation and us people also. And what does the scripture say? Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 2. In this day, I declare in the name of God to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord 
and the day of vengeance of our God. God will be, God will visit this nation. Amen. Spiritually, politically, economically, he will expose those who have brought uh, the last week I was just thinking, you know, the cops stopping uh, the the EMCC and uh, all the other these things from uh, going after the mafia. These are the same people that tell us that they know those who are sponsoring terrorism. Some have even been mentioned, and up till now, and in fact. In, uh, in, in Kaduna has continued to speak openly and carelessly things that will bring destruction to this nation and we are looking for thunder. Where is justice? Where is righteousness? Do we have conscience? Somebody has openly professed, declared, in fact, even given conditions for how you will deal with terrorism or terrorists. And everybody is sitting like this as if nothing is being said. Brethren, it shall not continue. It shall not continue. We will continue to seek the face of God until the God who reigns in Zion will arise. Righteousness will exalt this nation. And that is the standard of God. And in this year, the Lord is saying, Comfort to all who mourn. As I'm talking to you now, there are very poor women and, and children that that have lost their fathers, their brothers, their sons, their, their husbands. There are families that are mourning, scattered, their homes burnt. I don't know if you have ever run from your home before or experienced fire incident where you will be watching and you will be helpless and everything will get burnt. There are many, many. Oh God, have mercy upon this nation. Many are mourning. To console those who mourn in Zion, there are those who are not just mourning in the nation. There are people who are mourning in the church. There are people who have broken hearts seated here. We are dressed very well outwardly. But in worldly, we are bleeding. The Lord will comfort you. Amen. The one who heals the broken hearted will touch you. Amen. He will be lifted above whatever you are passing through. Amen. And when he is lifted up, he will glorify himself in your life. This will not continue. God will surely do something to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for money, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. Amen. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. When we go up and raising the trees of righteousness and those who will glorify it, it is from the broken. It is from those that have been afflicted. It is from those that are mourning. It is from those that have come to the, their wit's end. Those that have come to the almost, they, they are not sure of what the future is bringing. I want to tell you that there is a new dawn. Amen. God will help us. Amen. You will not only be restored, but God is saying, I will make you an instrument of rebuilding, and they shall rebuild the old Jews, they shall raise up the former dissolutions, and they shall repair the new cities. Amen. Amen. The dissolutions of many generations. Brethren, because exaltation belongs to God alone, God will bring it. 
He will help us. And He will help us to occupy the place He has appointed for us. Secondly, exaltation is God's nature. He is exalted above the heavens and His glory fills the earth. He transcends over all things. And indeed, He is sovereign over our lives and our circumstances. God's exaltation goes with power. And this power he has demonstrated in the life, suffering, death, and resurrection of his son Jesus Christ. And Paul prayed that this power of God that can change human situations and bring down the glory of God to our circumstances, that the believers may know this exalted Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he prayed for them. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 to 21, he says, What is that we may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which worketh in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sent, seated him at the right hand of the heavenly of the Father in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and have put all things on that Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren Exhortation has to do with the nature of God. And his desire is that as we encounter him and allow him to be the God of our lives, he will touch us where nobody can touch us. He will change things that may seem impossible. Because every power and principality, might and dominion are at his disposal. There is nothing that is bigger than our God. Nothing, no power, no government, no authority, no dominion. And so, as we look at this God, my prayer is that everything that is dead in our lives, in our families, in, our, in, a, in the church of God, and in this nation, shall hear the word of God, shall receive the touch of the power of God, the awesome God, the exalted God of the whole universe. And let there be a resurrection power touching our lives. You know, that was what Ezekiel was speaking of. In Ezekiel 37, the valley of the dry bones. You remember? And the way you look at Nigeria's situation, it is like the value of the dry bones. Will these bones live? Yes. It will only live if we walk in the ways of God. The Lord is saying, Righteousness will exalt this nation. Righteousness will bring back life. Righteousness will restore the family. Righteousness will, will put this life that is disorganized into what God has proposed it for. Because that is God's character, that is God's nature. And whenever he sees faith, righteousness, purity, holiness, in fact, he said, testing for righteousness. He said, he manifests himself. He shows up. The sovereign Lord shall rule and reign and lead in this nation and in our lives in the name of Jesus. Godly righteousness has, is the basis of God's exaltation. And when we talk of righteousness, we are talking about right standing with God. It has to do with faith. 
faith in the living God. It has to do with obedience to God's words and instructions by which God makes us acceptable unto himself. It creates opportunity for prayer and fellowship with the living God. It stirs up in our hearts one of the most gracious gifts and virtues of, that flow from God. Love. Love for brothers and sisters and our neighbors. Love for those that we are better off and those that are different from us. Righteousness is the character of God. It is the only thing that pleases God. It is the very life of God. No man can satisfy God or receive anything of God except by the help of God. And that help comes when God comes us acceptable unto him. And this can only come by faith in him. Trust and obedience. Because even our own righteousness and good deeds cannot make God please, be pleased with us. All our righteousness are like filthy rocks before the Lord. God desires that we believe and have faith and trust in him. Especially what he has done for us in his son Jesus Christ. Who has come to break down the dividing walls of hostilities. Touch our hearts and our lives. Deliver us from the powers of darkness and, and of this world. And reconcile us back unto God. And begin a new thing in us. For if any man be in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, God will begin to do a new thing. There is no way you can change a corrupt, rotten system with rotten men, corrupt men, wicked men. No, it will take the righteousness of God to turn around a system that is already bastardized. Be it life, family, or nation, or even the church. It will take speaking the truth. It will take obeying God. It will take being just. It will take faith. May God make us acceptable to Him so that He will find partners men and women who are willing to live to please him. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 1 to 3, who will desire righteousness, holiness, purity, and who want to really live to please God. May God begin to touch our hearts to direct us in the way of his righteousness. Amen. Amen. And when God finds faith, love, and righteousness, integrity and purity, He manifests Himself. In fact, people, uh, Proverbs 11, Proverbs 11, 3 to 8, shows us that righteousness delivers from destruction. Righteousness will direct our way around, and integrity will guide us. Righteousness opposes wickedness and iniquity. The hymn writer said, Courage, brothers, do not stumble. And he says, Do the right. Trust in God and do the right thing. And if you want to do that, Paul says, who, Anyone who wants to live righteously in this generation, let him be ready to suffer. There is a price to pay, but it is a price that will glorify God. Praise God. You may suffer, but God will vindicate you. I'm not saying that when you start it in the office that you will go free. Are you hearing me? 
even in the history of Israel, kings who ever wanted to lead the people in, in the path of righteousness ended, ended up facing much trouble, war. And whether you do the right or you do the wrong, you will still face war. Are you hearing me? Why not do the right thing and suffer for the right? Why should we suffer for doing wrong? May God help us in the name of Jesus. And so, if God shall be exalted, there are things that must be put down. There are things he will be exalted above. First is human authority and spiritual forces and powers that demonstrate and show themselves in pride and dominion. This we see in leadership. In Nebuchadnezzar, when he had achieved all that he had, achieved, had achieved, lifted up his stool, his soul, and boasted, is this not the Babylon which I have built for myself? He refused to give honor to God. And God showed himself exalted himself above him, brought him down, and made him to turn into a beast for seven years. And God, who has dominion in the affairs of the world and of humanity, will surely arise for us. God <clears throat> must be exalted above the earth and the systems of the world. He must be exalted. We must not conform to the standards and principles and workings and expectations of the world. Let God arise and show himself mighty on our behalf. He must be exalted above our challenges and our problems. Sometimes our problems and challenges are, are, are so complex that we lose sight even of the very presence of God. When the disciples came back from their mission in Luke chapter 10, from verse 17 to 20, they said to the Lord, We have a great testimony. Things happened. At your name, Evil spirits, demons, bow to us. But Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Brother and sister, don't be afraid of 2023. Move into it with the sure confidence of the Lord. Authority and power from heaven has been released upon you. Are you hearing me? Just believe God and walk in obedience and righteousness with him, and you will see God fight your battle. Praise God. Amen. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents, scorpions. These are imageries of the wicked one and his agents. And over all, not some, are you hearing me? Just in, on your knees. Those who fight on horses, they will fall. And they will not rise. Amen. But those who, fall, who fight on their knees shall stand. Some may boast of their horses, others may boast of their chariots, but we shall boast of the name of the Lord. And by that name, we shall overcome. Amen. God shall be exalted. Jesus says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. 
Amen. Amen. Brethren, when God intervenes in our situations and He is exalted, brethren, He helps us. The individual is helped. As we can see in the case of Anna, in, in, in 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2, God intervened in Anna's situation and all things around. I don't know what you may be passing through or the penina in your life or the need that you have. This year, God shall be exalted. For by strength, no man shall be there. But with God, you will overcome. God will intervene and be exalted just as he did in the life of Joseph. You know Joseph, the man that carried heavy burden and vision, that because of the hatred of his brethren, he was sold into slavery. And even in slavery, he still walked with God faithfully. And because of him walking with God in spite of the situation, God blessed him. And through him, blessed the house of Potiphar. And through him, blessed, him, blessed Egypt. God exalted him because he walked in righteousness. He did not bring reproach to the name of the Lord. When you look at Genesis chapter 50, verses 18 to 21, when his, their father died, Jacob died, and his brethren came to him and said, Ah, please have mercy, <laughs> forgive us. Does it mean that all these years that he has been with them, they thought that he will still avenge and revenge? And he said, Please, I have forgiven you. You did it for evil, with evil intention. But God turned it around. My brother, my sister, I want to tell you that whatever manipulation or agenda the enemy has put down, even this year, for evil, God will turn it around. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. He says, God did what he did. He brought me out through your evil manipulation so that you will be preserved. Was it only the house of Jacob was, that was preserved? No. Other nations, my brother, in what God is going to do this year, He will not only touch our lives, He will touch our families, He will touch our neighborhood, He will touch our nation, He will change our situations. Our narrative will surely change in the name of Jesus Christ. When God intervenes, even in nations, He shows Himself glorious and mighty. Because of time, we may not be able to look at them in details. But when we look at 2 Chronicles 17 and 20, we see there the reign of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat succeeded his father, Asa, King Asa. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, Asa, the Bible testifies, walked in the way of his father David. He dealt with the Baal and Asher. He brought about reformation and made Israel to obey God and to follow God. And God brought a turn around. When his son came to power, in fact, when you look at that passage, Especially 2 Chronicles 17, you will see what God did through Jehoshaphat. That Jehoshaphat secured Israel security. He also brought spiritual transformation. He brought down the strange gods. He brought Israel back to the word of God. And in fact, because of what God began to do in Judah, the other nations around them submitted, brought gifts. And in fact, 
God gave him influence over other nations. Israel was insulted. Righteousness insults the nation. And I pray that God will so visit and remember us that our story will change. The righteousness of God will usher in the reign of God in the lives and circumstances of people and of our nation. As Hebrews 1, 8 and 9 says, the throne of our God is the throne of righteousness. His scepter, the scepter of his kingdom is the scepter of righteousness. Amen. He loves righteousness and he hates iniquity, wickedness. May we be touched of God that we will seek him as individuals, as families, and as a nation. We have seen that through the word of God, nations advance and have influence and dominance by the righteousness of God. Righteousness is God's panacea to corruption, hypocrisy and wickedness. Science, technological advancement, economic growth, fairness in politics will come only by righteousness. When God is exalted, He will heal and restore us. And He will intervene in our individual and family issues. He shall be glorified. This year is the divine, is the year of divine exaltation. And as we worship him, serve him, honor him, and obey him and follow him with all our hearts, brethren. The walls of our Jer the walls of Jericho shall collapse. The things that have contended with us upon the now shall collapse. This year, there will be special intervention that will bring the turn around to the glory and honor of our God. Thus says the Lord. Let us pray. There is none like you. We are the God of all the earth and of all flesh. We bow before you. We bring ourselves and our families and this nation at the foot of the cross. Let the power of life be released upon this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, toward the strategies of men, and be thou exalted. And in your exaltation, show us mercy. And let there be healing and deliverance. Restoration and rebuilding. Lord, let it be. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and 